Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John Hazelup, and I'm with FDOT Central Office Surveying and Mapping. And this is the second in a three-part webinar series on Bentley's Open Roads Technology Civil Survey for the FDOT SS3 and SS4 Design Survey Workflow. In the initial part one, I went through many of the settings and dialog boxes, and those will be used in this particular webinar, but it's still an introduction to open roads. In this webinar, I'm going to be importing data into Bentley Survey. Those of you that have used data acquisition in the past will have a little bit of a leg up, but as data acquisition was integrated into the Bentley's Project Explorer, then <clears throat> they renamed it to Bentley Survey. I'm going to show you visualization of the survey data, mostly done in the Project Explorer. I also want to show you some techniques for cleaning up the survey data, and then eventually we're going to get to building and editing the survey terrain model. In the first webinar, I talked about the types of data that you can port into Bentley Survey, but just realize that the KCPT4 file is probably the preferred workflow if there is a best practices, I would say that, uh, due to one issue that's with the EFB import, and that's that the ground attributes are not being honored when the EFB XYZ or uh, the control and processing of the OABS takes place. It's not a fatal flaw, but it does add a little bit of effort to cleaning up the segments. There's also the FB XYZ and OBS import, and that's done by dragging the XYZ into the Project Explorer and the Survey tab, and the OBS chains are automatically extracted and put into the survey database. You can also import a control file from EFB and process the OBS. There's also various other data that you can bring in, an XML, SRV, KCP, and more. Not sure I'll get to any of that right now uh, on this webinar, but some of it works depending on the level of cleanup that needs to be done. The XML works well. KCP and SRV will also work. I want to start off with bringing in a PT4 file. So in this particular file right here, it's an empty file. You going to make sure you set the geographic coordinates. In this case, I'll just use the west zone in these examples. And you also want to be aware, before you get very far, to look at your civil standards, look at your project settings, FDOT survey settings, and in the information bar, which I've got, in this case, just docked right on top of the level display. If you notice, you can just drag and drop it. Down at the very bottom, in the terrain model attributes, I've got the maximum side triangle length set, and I've got it set at 100 feet, and that's probably about what we want for this particular file. In the Explorer, I've talked about that at length in the first webinar. We're going to go to the Survey tab, and what we need to do is go to a Casey project. In this case, it's just a test project, and drag in the PT4 file. Now, we can do a, a there's a, another way we could actually open the the default field book and right click and say new and create a field book and then from there load a file. But note it doesn't name the field book, you'd have to manually name it. And there's really an easier way. So I'm going to delete that and just drag the PT4 directly on the survey tab. And you can drop it anywhere. Just just let it go. You can combine segments or separate segments. In this case there are no segments, so I'll just say accept in the combined mode and do a fit to view and you'll see what got brought in. Now note this is a 3D file. It's important that you use a 3D file. And that's one of the ways you can import survey data directly into Bentley Survey. I'll we'll show you a couple of more ways. Got a file here that I'm going to open up and import a segment from a particular job. And also note, in most cases, you want to have the annotation scale lock off. In previous versions, and in the SS3 especially, you probably want to start with it on. But for the next release, we found that the problem with using annotation scale for point labels, the problems it causes is probably more than the issues it resolves. So we've gone back to a static type labeling, so if you just turn that off, when your labels come in, they should come in at a round of a, a two-tenths to a half a foot scale, and if you'll leave that off and turn that back on after you bring the survey data in, 
then uh, your labeling will be static. So I'm going to make sure this is off. And I'm going to go find the segment. In this case, I'm just going to go to a EFB segment that has been processed. This is a processed segment, and the XYZ file has been exported, and the processed points brought back into the XYZ. If you notice right down here, here's the 4362711B XYZ file. When I drag and drop this XYZ file, Bentley Survey will go ahead and look at the OBS with the same exact name that's in the same folder and extract the chains. So I can drag and drop this, just drop it anywhere. Okay. And note that now the field book is populated. If I do a fit view, you'll see what got brought in. And this is the survey data tree. What you'll see is you've got field book and then you've got import events. Under data, you'll see the import, particular import event and you can visualize the points and chains just by clicking them on and off. Also the all points features and the all linear features are populated so for every event you can always turn your elements on and off, your features on and off just by turning these on and off. So that's bringing in an XYZ. Let me open up another file in this same folder making sure again that the annotation scale lock is off and the scale is set to one to one. Both of those are important. We want to make sure we set the geographic coordinates. And in this case, I'm going to use the same segment, but I'm going to drag and drop a control file. So if you want to process in Bentley Survey, you can drag in the control file and then process the OBS by dragging in the OBS file. So I'm going to drop the control file here. Let's see. Turn them on. Fit to view. I've got some control points. If I zoom in on them, you'll see that the label scale is works a little better like this. That way if I turn it on and go to a different scale, it's not going to change. That changing of labels actually added a lot to the regeneration time. So we want to avoid that by leaving our stale, uh, label static if possible. Note that uh, over in the field books, let me go back over here to the field book again, that now what you see, you'll see the, the point features. There are no linear features, but you'll see the points. It can be turned on and off. Um, the control actually can be turned on and off too. This actually designates control. So as the points go, the little white triangle designates it as control. Notice there now is an adjustment category. You can also show air ellipses. You can turn the adjustment on, but it, it won't actually turn on until there's some observations in the file. So what I'm going to do is go over, find the OBS, drag it and drop it into the file. Okay. And what happens is you've got that same file we saw before when I dragged the XYZ in. You've got the same, the same project. But now you're seeing all the individual shots from the traverse points. So there, these shots go to every point that was located. You can turn these off by just turning it by unchecking the observations. Also note that it has not been adjusted yet. So if I go in and I right click and say turn on, let me let me actually get in a little closer to see if you can notice that it that it adjusts. Uh, I'm just going to stick a a line at the end to show you what happens when you turn on the adjust. Okay. It now has adjusted. You can see it's actually adjusted from its original position when there was no geodesy being applied to a new position. And that uh, distance was right at about eight thousandths, nine thousandths. So almost a hundredth was adjusted. Okay. So that's what we're looking at as data imports. 
So we've imported a PT4, we've imported an XYZ, and the OBS chains automatically follow. We've also dragged and dropped a control file and then processed an OBS chain. So what's next is visualizing the survey data. Most of the visualization, as I said, is going to be done in the Project Explorer. Get back over to the MicroStation. And for this, I want, to, I want to go back to the original test file that I showed you a moment ago. And over in the Survey tab of the Project Explorer, we have the ability, as I showed you earlier, to visualize points. And we can visualize individual points. We can visualize chains. Let me turn the chains off. But we can, in, uh, we can visualize individual points like the antenna, monuments. So any anything that's in our feature categories, we can visualize. Same thing with chains. If we want to see particular chains like slopes or buildings, we can visualize those. There actually is another way to visualize, and that's from the civil standards. And that's from the survey display itself, okay? from the feature definitions of the survey display. So we could turn those off. We could visualize, again, by specific features, but we can also, since the survey display is organized in categories, we can visualize by drainage categories or utilities or by topo. The other thing we can do in visualization is we can use the level displays. If we want to see the topo RD compliant elements, we can go over to the level display Make sure your filters are on right here and simply choose the standard you want to look at. If I want to see topo RD, I select topo RD. If I want to see utilities, I select the utilities. If I want to see drainage, I can select the drainage. So those are many of the aspects of visualization that are important to the SS4, SS3 survey workflow. I also want to talk about um, the survey filters. If everything is on, you can expand the survey filters. If you want them to show up, you have to actually turn off the fill books first. Because they both visualize some of the same elements, there's a conflict. So one of them has to be turned off before the other is can be activated. So if I want to see what's in zone, we have actually have zone filters set up. If I want to see what's in zone one for points and chains, you just simply click on or check the checkbox. If you want to see drainage or zone two, which is drainage, it should be there. These zones are great for helping with cleanup because if they're not in the zone, you can go back to the civil standards or to the data points and, and move, highlight, visualize, select, and then in the properties or element information box, you can make changes. So we've looked at survey data, we've looked at survey filters, and we've looked at visualizing in the civil standards. So now I want to do a little bit of cleaning up. As I said, using the element information box is critical. We want to visualize, we want to select, and then we want to edit. We also have the survey da database to consider, and we have chain editing. So I'm going to go back to the file that I drug the XYZ in and talk a little bit about the cleanup. Now this is just one segment. But if we go to our 
filters and look and see what's available. We'll turn off our field books. Note that it can be turned off anywhere up here. And I turn on my zone 2, for instance. I'm not seeing anything. So what happened was the drainage structures, points and chains, were actually put in a, a different zone. If I look at zone 3, you're going to see some utilities. I'll zoom in on a little bit, a few of these. We also see a few shots that show up in zone 3. And points that are named for buried electric in this case. Let me up this to a 50 scale for annotation purposes so you can see what it is. It's buried electric. You've got points, and if I highlight and select one of those points, and I go over here and look at the element information, I see it is in zone 3. Okay. But what happened if I look at zone 1, there's still a few utilities in zone 1. There's also, so I see water, I see buried electric. And if there's any drainage structures, they're probably also in zone one. See some curb and gutter that need to be cleaned up. So what I want to do is, in this case, I'll just I'll, I'll fix one of the zones. How about zone three of utilities? Let's get all the utilities over into zone three. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. One is we can visualize the civil standards. Let me turn everything back on, go over to Civil Standards. And I'll visualize just the utilities. So if I do that, it's going to visualize all utilities based on the features, points, and chains. So if I select them, visualize, select, and then edit. So I select, I go over to the Element Information box, I see I've got cells that are in a zone. If you look down here in under point feature, I see zones right here, and it varies. So I want to move. I want to change those to zone three. Also, looks like I have some line strings which are uh, show up as feature linear features, and on zone they also vary. Again, I'm going to make that zone three and select them. Now let's go back to the survey tab and see what effect it had. I can go back, turn on the zone 1, and you'll see those utilities are not there anymore. What you do see though are some of the points for utilities. There's some BE points and I saw some BWs that were also in zone 1. And I'm going to show you a way you can select those. Okay, so if I look at zone 3, you'll see now I've got a lot more points and chains in zone 3. All of them are there, except for the default points. And that's where creating custom survey filters comes into play. If I right click and say new, I can create a survey filter. In this case, I'll just call it uh, utility points. If you give it a category, it will actually put the filter in its own uh, expandable folder or category. So I'll, I'll just say UTIL and give it a filter value. Drop down here. We'll say new. The object type, I want point features because I want to change point features to zone 3 that are in zone 1. The name, I'll use name of the point feature. In this case, there's an operator that says contains. And if you notice in that point feature I looked at, there was it, it had a BE for buried electric in the point 
feature list. Now, I can, if I hit accept, what's going to happen right now, you see it, the cursor is still in the BE window right here. This, you want to be aware of this. If I hit accept and I looked, the BE is not here. So it didn't take. So what happens is you have to say B, you have to put the value in and either tab out or click out of that. Then when you see it, hit accept. And did it do it? No. B E. B E. Tab. Accept. There it goes. So if you tab out, the operator will show up. Hit accept. And notice it created a new category called Util over here. I'm going to I'm going to select it, and now I've got all utility points with BE. Some of these are going to be in Zone Three, but some are going to be in Zone Two or Zone One. Not Zone Two, but Zone One. I'm going to select them, visualize, select, and edit. So I've got 127 cells. If I look at the zone they're attached to, it says varies. I want it zone three. I could create another category or I can edit this one. If you notice, if I un uncheck it and highlight it, it shows up in the properties box right over here. So now I can edit this filter right here. I think the other one was BW. So I accepted it and you see it's changed. Now look at, look at BW points. If I select those, click on the cells up top, look at the zone for point features. It says varies, and it does. There's some in three, some in one. And I'm going to put them all in three. Select and click on the screen. Now they've been all moved over to zone three. So all the points and all the chains in zone three should be correct. Let me turn off. Now if I go to zone three, I've got point I should have points and chains. See? And if I turn off zone three and look at zone one. Now I can analyze what's in zone one and what belongs in the DTM and what does not belong in the DTM. So that's how you visualize, select, and you edit. Something else I want to show you is the survey database and chain editing. So if I go back to the file, and I, I'm going to just check everything on for right now. Not worry about the zone filters. Just going to close that up. And look at particulars of the database itself. If I highlight all the point features, okay, you can have pro you can show properties of it. You can turn on and off annotations, and you can create new point features. And there's one more thing you can do. If you look down at the task bar, the task menu for civil tools, which I showed you in the very first webinar, and look under the survey processing, you'll see show details and hide details. If I hit show details, remember I have all the points highlighted. The points dialog box for the survey database shows up. Now I can do some editing in here, but just be aware you can also right click and sort. But you notice you have your display, your feature def definition. These link codes are actually the point and curve codes. I'll talk about that a little bit later. You've got your zones, descriptions, whether it's a terrain model attribute by definition or if you want to change it to spot or not set. And then of course you have coordinates and elevation. 
in the Project Explorer, if I want to look at all linear features, it's the same thing. And I don't have to look at all. I can look at any particular import event. So I could right click right there and show properties of it. Go to the task, hit show details. And now what I'm looking at are chains or all the linear features in the database. Again, you can edit the attributes, whether to display, feature definition, zones, terrain model attributes. So that's your survey database. We also are still in a transition period between GeoPack and pure open roads technology. Is our understanding when MicroStations Connect, the civil module comes out, there will be no GeoPack. But for now, in the SS3 and SS4 workflow, GeoPack is still a vital part of the workflow. And we'll need a GPK file. Just go to your field book, or actually go to your default field book, say export. GeoPack format is going to act, ask you if you have an active file and there's not one open. So what we'll need to do is we'll say GeoPack and we'll open a GPK file. I'll just leave it as 001 for now. Say OK. Create it. Now when I export to a GeoPack format, it says existing data will be redefined in the current GPK file. Continue, say yes, and the GPK file will be populated. And it's large files will take a little longer. This is a small file, but if you look at survey chains, you'll see all the survey chains are now in the file. If you look at points, you'll see all the points that we looked at just a little while ago are in the GPK file. I also wanted to talk a little bit about chain editing before I leave this file. Chain editing is something we're going to have to do. We're, we have various ways of getting to it. One of the other things we're going to have to do is resolve crossing chains. But just chain editing in general in Bentley Survey is fairly easy. I'm going to go over here and turn on just my Zone 1. DTM attributes, so zone 1 chains, points, and zone 1 chains. And if you look right here, and I highlight this, you'll see it says feature definition CSL, which is concrete slab. We know there's not a concrete slab going across the highway, so what? if you look at it, you'll see what happened. There's a concrete slab here and a concrete slab here, and probably in the OBS file, uh, there was not two commas put in, only one comma, so the chains actually got linked together. So chain editing is something we can do by highlighting, selecting the file, the, the, the uh, chain, and once we select it, you see we have contextual toolbox open up. And if I just go down the list, you'll see we can append a point to the feature, we can remove points from a linear feature. We can join features. We can uh, move a point along a feature. We can insert points. We can make the linear feature a closed figure. We can break the linear feature. We can transpose it. So there's, there's a number of things. We can move the linear feature. And then we can get a report on the particular linear feature. If you go on down, you can convert the graphics, convert to just graphic linear features right using this one right here. And then if you uh, go one more, you'll see the manage point list. We'll probably use this the most in your in in editing. And then you can edit the points themselves from the features. If I select this one, I just want to show you what it looks like. These are all the points in that particular chain, that particular particular linear feature. So we can do some point editing by linear feature right here. We also can manage the point list. If I look, it's going to show you you've got many of the same uh, 
tools, but you've got insert, replace, delete, and you can move these up and down. You can also transpose the linear feature right here. The link code in this, there's no curves, so you won't see anything in here, but this is where you set arcs, single arcs, PCs, PTs, and such. And this particular one, what we want to do is we want to break this chain and make it two chains. So if I go down here to break a linear feature and choose that, it's going to ask me to locate the point that are, where I want to break it. And I'm just going to choose this point right here. And it broke the chain. Now, it did show up. It, what, it's, it's, it's just a little quirk. If I revisualize this, it'll show back up. Okay. But if you notice now when I highlight it, when I, when I hover on it, it's two separate chains. This one got changed to CSL1 under bar 3, where this is just CSL1. So this, this particular chain is good. I've got an extra point in this chain. So if I highlight it and manage the point list, there's, there's a number of ways I could remove, probably just remove the point by clicking on it. Say so locate the point feature. Click on it. It's gone. Also, another way I can do it is if I highlight it and say manage the point list, if I highlight a, any particular point, notice that it puts a purple fuzzy area so you can show it. So, so what you see is, is CSL5 needs to be taken out of this chain. Okay. So I'll just say delete and accept. And again, it's gone. So that's chain editing in a nutshell. We also can do uh, terrain modeling cleaning up. And um, we do it in a similar fashion. We, we show the survey selection set, we visualize, we select, and we create the terrain model. We also can show the survey database, crossing chains, and adding features. So there's a little bit of work we can do, we, we need to do before we actually create a terrain model. Let me go back to an open a new file and show you another set of edits that we're going to need to do to the survey database. So if I say open and let me back up here to a file here and I'm just going to open up uh, let's say survey one say open. I'm going to bring in some raw data from a Casey project. In this case, I'm going to bring drag, drag and drop the PT4 right here into the survey database. Say accept. Now this will probably take about 15 to 20 seconds. So once the database has been brought in, what you're going to see in a raw or an, an a database that's not real clean is you're going to see areas where there are exclamation point warnings. And if you look at your database, I'm going to go to point features and look, you're going to see that there are some red features. In this case, a GRD instead of a GND. So if I turn off everything, turn on just the GRD, it looks like there's one point. If I edit it, change its feature definition to GND, notice the GRD disappeared and now there's only GNDs. Works the same for linear features. If you look at your linear features, let me turn these on. I see we have a, a variety of, of 
features that are not quite right. There's a guard, looks like a GR for guardrail. This was an old database, so that's why I know that's guardrail. Now we use guardrail right, guardrail left, and double guardrails. Here's one that we used a barbed wire fence. So I turn on the BWF. Looks like I've got a few of them. I can select them, go over to the feature definition, and, change, and correct it. F and C. Now there's no more BWF, there's no barbed wire fence. It's all under F and C now, which are correct. And if I set the scale, you can see them. So that's the way you edit chains and point features that have features that don't match the feature definition that are built into SS3 and SS4. <clears throat> so the survey database, crossing chains, and adding features. So let me go to back to MicroStation. And I'm going to open up the original file that I had started with, the sample file. Once you have your, your features set, you can go ahead and create your DTM or your terrain model. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uncheck all fill books and I'm going to use my zone filters to segregate zone 1 and zone 2. And note that in zone 1 and zone 2, zone two uh, if you have, let me pick out any particular one for instance, if you look at a point feature, it's going to tell you its terrain model attribute Coming out of Casey, it does a good job of preserving whether it's a ground, which will come to a spot, or if it's a ground chain, a G chain, which will show up as a break line. Okay? So that gives the crew full control of what goes into the terrain model and all they have to do is use G for ground and anything else, F for features or X for cross sections or U for undefined or user defined or some I actually use it for utilities. So I select it, go up to the fill books, right click on fill book, say create terrain model from fill book selection set and the terrain is created. Note that this crane ha does not have a feature definition at this point. If you remember, the feature definition uh, will end up being from an element template and will be existing ground. But I want to look at a couple of things here first. I want to show you resolving crossing chains. Some of the things you can, now these are also chain edits, but it's functionality in the Bentley terrain models, we have a tool for report crossing chains. If I hit that, choose the uh, terrain model, uh, I'll just use the default tolerance. You'll see it comes up with a selection set of what what uh, is crossing chains. And there's something I can do. I'm going to select this again. I'm going to select this particular terrain model and I'm going to go over here to calculate features displays, and I'm just going to turn off the triangles. If you remember, I showed you in the other one, you can turn on contours, turn off contours, turn on triangles, turn them off. But for resolving these crossing chains, it'll be easier. So if I select one, you'll see it highlights it. And as if I, and I'm going to try to put this over here so you can see it. As I move through the selection, it shows you with the little red dot right here, here, or here, 
where the actual problem is. There's a few few different things I can do. In this case, there's a point that's, that is across the line. So I can I can edit this point. I could actually I could move a point along a linear feature. You notice how I can move this, and it and it's going to keep the elevation. So that's one way to resolve it right there. Go back. I can also change points within the manage point list. Now here's one where I could move this particular point if I decided that this point where and if I I can do that by say if I look at if I put SLP eighty, see it highlights it. Maybe I want to move that point to somewhere like here. Now there's a hundred and eighteen point eight this one's 121.5, so not a, not a lot of difference. We've got a couple of feet here, but for the top of a slope, it's probably pretty close. So if I hit this little selector right here, choose a point, and click, it'll actually substitute that particular point. If I say accept, that portion of the chain is finished. Now here, I can do something similar. It looks, what happened is these points are crossed. This point here, and this chain, let me do it like this. There you go. So this point probably should go, instead of here, I, this point should, instead of going going to the next point, which is down there, it probably should go here, here, and here. You know, uh, it should actually here and here. These these are swapped around, and you can tell by the numbers: SLP A5, SLP B6. So so the A's and the B's got switched around. It's easy to select them. Hit the little icon for for visualization. Once it's done its chain, say accept, and it'll move it up there. Then I can actually edit the other chain. Manage point list. Show you another way to do it. Go down here. Select this point. We'll make A7. B7 instead. Say accept. And now you notice no more crossing chains. So I've created a terrain model by visualizing it. I've selected the zones. I've created the terrain model from the survey selection set. I've resolved the crossing chains. And the only other thing, if we can add or subtract features. Uh, in this case, I noticed that this feature was wrong. You can remove features a couple of different ways, but in this, this case, um, I will go back and highlight the terrain. I need to select it and turn on the triangles. And this, obviously, this uh, tower should not be in the terrain model. So I can change it right here. I can actually change it in the, the uh, element information box. I can also remove a feature by selecting it. In this case, I'm just going to use this spot right here and change that to do not include. And see, it does not try it anymore. There's some other added features that I can do. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time to finish it up, but I wanted to show you that you can. So I'm going to go to one more file and go to number two here, open it up. The terrain model is already created in this one. And this is one where I can 
turn off the triangles. I could resolve crossing chains, choose. Notice there's quite a few. I'm not going to try to fix all these, but I want to zoom to at least one and show you that there's a particular chain here that didn't come across. It's, it's actually just two points and it's showing as a curve. But you can see as I move through everywhere that that other the other chains cross this particular one there's a problem so just by fixing this one chain I'm going to resolve quite a few and I'm and as you see it's art PC and art PC I'm just going to change the, both of these to none and say accept and you can see that I've already fixed a lot of the chains um, let me go down and try one more Here's one where it's crossing along the, the shoulder and it's a slope and I can fix this one just by reversing or transposing the direction. Notice it transposed and now that one disappeared. So it's pretty easy to fix these chains Use your resolving crossing brake line tool. Uh, note in the element information, I mean the level display, go back to levels, make sure they're all on because I think, yes, I've got a, a couple of features that I can add. If I turn on this particular terrain, oh, I, <clears throat> yeah, let me do that, go back to element information and turn on the triangles. You can see that I've got a, what I would like to do is put a hole here because this area was not surveyed very well. I think there's actually a gas station here, um, but it was not included in the terrain. So I want to put a hole around it. And then I've got, also got a boundary where I want to cut this off. You'll notice up here, along here somewhere, I'm going to cut this off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add some features. In this case I'm going to locate the terrain model, locate the admin, add, reset. This is not a boundary so I need to change this to a hole and notice the hole got created. Same thing with the boundary. I want to add a boundary to this. We'll reset, change to a boundary and now my terrain's been limited to this boundary. I know we're about to run out of time, so let me go through just a couple of things. So I've added features. Uh, I want to apply a feature definition, and that was one thing, the last thing I was going to do. If you go and select the terrain, you can go down here to No Feature Definition, and I'm going to change it to DTM Existing. In this case, Turn the triangles on, show you what it looks like. Okay. You can name the terrain model in the element information box, and you can also export the terrain model. And you'll do that at the Project Explorer. If you go to the civil model, you can find your terrain. And if you right click on it, you can um, actually export the terrain model probably to a GFAC 10 or a land XML. I'll just say triple selection call this uh, ground and now I've exported the terrain to the ground. If I look in my folder, not in the Casey projects, but in the survey folder, you're going to see that I have a ground XML now. 
at the end of this, I wanted to put a terrain models from survey data avoiding pitfalls. So if you, I'm not going to read all through this, but just suffice it to say that you want to resolve all your break lines, your DTM issues. You want to create an initial terrain and resolve crossing break lines because they have to be done that way. And then at some point, you're going to probably have to delete that particular terrain and go back and create, um, recreate it for the final deliverable. And that pretty much concludes my webinar. If there's any questions, could the concrete slab have been edited by inserting the second comma in the chain list to create the break? You know, John, yes, you could have. You could, I could have edited the OBS itself is what I could have done. What I'm going to do because of time, I'm going to go back and answer all these questions and post them. I also have one more thing I'm going to post. So, what, so you'll probably want to come back to uh, ECSO's posted webinars. You're going to find this webinar. You're going to find these questions answered. And also, I have a walkthrough that will walk you through the entire process. And I'm going to post that in a PDF format. But because of time, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. I see we're a few minutes over. I apologize for delay, but thank you all for coming.